The tech industry has been hit very hard in the past few years. We've all seen the declining job numbers and heard the stories of people being laid off. And because this has largely coincided with the rise of AI, like ChatGPT and tools like this, many people think that AI is the reason why these layoffs are happening and it's all because like programmers are being replaced by AI. But this is actually not at all what is actually going on. We've actually seen already and anyone that really knows how to code understands that AI really cannot replace programmers as of right now. And there's two actual real reasons why these layoffs are happening. First of them is the economy. Now, the economy has not been doing well. In the post-pandemic world, there was a lot of money printing, which caused inflation to go up, which in return caused interest rates to go up. And when borrowing money is expensive, generally, and this has happened pretty much throughout history, companies will invest less into growth, as in they're less inclined to hire more people to build new things, when the money to actually hire these people is much more expensive because of higher interest rates, which leads to less jobs over time. So I've talked about this before. But the second reason, which almost no one is talking about, is this secret law called the Section 174 change in the US tax code. That essentially changes the way in which companies can deduct developer salaries from their taxable income. And this law has actually been silently destroying the tech industry, especially smaller companies in the past two years. So in this video, I'm going to explain what this law is in detail, how this one seemingly insignificant law is so destructive for the tech industry, affecting jobs massively, why no one seems to be talking about this and why we might actually have some proof that this law might be going away soon, as well as some other reasons why you actually should be quite optimistic about the next one or two years in terms of tech jobs coming back. Okay, so what is this law all about? So what section 174 of the US tax code does is it changes the way in which R&D, so research and development expenditure is treated in terms of your expenses that you can deduct in taxes as a company. But what it basically means is that developer salaries, which are counted as R&D expenses for the purposes of this tax law, can no longer be fully deducted in taxes for the tax year in which the company actually paid those salaries. Instead, you have to what is called amortize these salaries over five years for US employees and across 15 years for international employees. Okay, so you might be wondering, what the hell does this even mean? Why is this so bad? So let me just explain this to you simply. So let's imagine a company, a tech startup that is earning $500,000 a year in income and they hire five developers at a salary of $100,000 a year each, meaning that the total profit of the company is $0 because they earn 500k in revenue and then they pay 500k in expenses in developer salaries and we're assuming for simplicity that they have no other expenses and things like this. Now in the past, as you might imagine, this would mean that the company would have a tax bill of $0 because they didn't earn any profit. Makes sense, right? But with this new tax change, what this means is that this company can no longer deduct all of these salaries as expenses in their tax returns. Instead, for every one of these 100K salaries, they have to amortize it. So essentially divide up the salary across five years. So for every 100K salary, they can now only deduct 20K as expenses in their tax returns. So what will this mean? Again, the same company, nothing has changed about the reality of the business. They're still earning 500K a year in revenue and they still pay 500K a year in developer salaries. But because of this new law, this is no longer counted as 500K of expenses in their tax returns. Instead, they can only deduct one fifth of that. So 100K as an expense, meaning that in their tax returns, this company is now thought to have a profit of $400,000. So this $400,000 is now taxable income that the company will have to pay taxes on. And with the current corporate tax rate of 21%, this will mean they have to pay $84,000 in taxes. But wait a minute, they still actually had to pay the $500,000 in expenses. The reality didn't change, it's just the way these are treated in tax exchanges. So this company still made 500K, but they still had to spend 500K, but they still somehow now have to pay a tax bill of $84,000, typically because they're not allowed to deduct all of the developer salaries 
in their taxes, which means that this company might well have zero dollars in cash, but they still might have a tax bill of $84,000 that they have to pay. So what does this mean? Well, they have to now fire one of these employees where they don't actually have to pay the 100K in order to be able to afford this tax bill. So why is this so terrible for tech jobs? Well, this means that especially for smaller companies that don't have a ton of cash, like bootstrapped companies, for example, now might have a cash flow crisis where they literally have a higher tax bill than the cash that they actually have, which in normal situations should never happen because the point of tax is that tax is applied only on profit, not on revenue. And so companies, especially smaller companies, might be forced to lay off people. And we can see right here some examples on Twitter where companies are literally having to lay off employees simply because of Section 174. And there is actual proof that this is at least one major reason for the layoff that we've seen. While technically this law came into effect in 2022, companies actually only saw their first tax bills as a result of this law in 2023. And it's only then that they realized just how much this one law had affected their taxes. And that is then when they had to start doing these layoffs to even be able to afford these tax bills. And what do you know, 2023 is exactly when we started to see the mass rounds of layoffs. So then why is no one talking about this? Well, we can all speculate, but I think the major reason is that this doesn't really affect big companies or VC backed startups. This really only affects the small players, the smaller startups that don't have massive amounts of cash. And it's exactly these smaller companies that don't have the voices or the power to really talk about this at big scale. If this was something that was affecting the bigger companies, I bet they would be talking about this a lot more. So is this the only reason for the layoffs? No, I think it was a combination of two things. It was the economy that affected all the companies and, we, and I've covered this in more detail in other videos, but this one actually probably had a much bigger impact than many people think. But we do actually have some reason for optimism. I've found this tweet from this guy called Austin Alred, who's like a big voice in the startup tech community on Twitter, where he actually made a tweet calling out the new Trump administration to fix and remove this idiotic law. And then a few days later, he made it another tweet where he actually said that for the record, people close to Trump slash Vance reached out and are taking this very seriously. We'll see what happens. So it is actually possible that this law might go away soon. Obviously we won't know, but there is some reason for optimism. The other reason for optimism we have is that interest rates have started to go down. The economy is improving, inflation is going down. And every time in the past when interest rates went down, when we got close to 0% interest rates, companies have started to invest more. And when companies invest more, it's especially these kinds of R&D expenses like software engineering hiring that is going to increase. So I think maybe not this year, but at least a year after that, we are going to see a resurgence in tech jobs. Will it ever get back to the same level as it was before? I don't know, maybe not. I think the environment in sort of 2020 to 2021 was too good to be true. But nevertheless, I think we're sort of getting to the point where things will slowly start improving. So what does this mean for you? It means that if you're right now sitting there learning to code, you should double down and take this as seriously as possible. Because if you do that, you're going to be ready when the jobs come back. Many people right now, they're quitting. They're thinking like, oh, AI is replacing programming. It's not worth it anymore. When really, this is just an economic cycle. And there's some stupid laws that are making things even worse, which will all eventually improve. So what I would do if I were you, number one, get as good as possible at programming. Pick one path, one specialization in programming to get as good as possible in. And number three, really build projects, like build as many projects as possible so that you have a lot of things to show on your resume when these jobs come back that you actually know how to code. And I would highly, highly recommend going through a proven roadmap, a proven program to get a really strong grasp on the foundations of programming. Because if you just learn the foundations once, you learn how programming works, you learn how everything works together, you will then have these skills for the rest of your life. Now, if you're looking for a resource like this, then I have a program like this that I've created called Python Developer Bootcamp, which I will leave down below in the description where I have taught more than 500 people become developers and I've specifically built this program such that we're not gonna go through useless information that you don't actually need. The biggest frustration I've had with most programs out there is that they teach all this stuff that you don't really need to know when really, especially in this day and age, you can just get AI to help you whenever you want. So really what we will focus on is the foundations, the ideas, the fundamentals that every developer needs. And then I will give you all the building blocks for you to go and build really cool stuff with this yourself 
yourself so that you actually learn to become the kind of developer that companies actually want. Now, I've been on the other side. I know exactly what they want. So I also built in a full getting hired bootcamp where I teach you all the skills to actually take these technical skills that you learn and turn them into a real job in the real world. So if you're interested in that, again, there's more than 100, 500 students. You can look at the testimonials on the landing page and you can use the code section 174 for a special discount of the program. I'll make it available for, let's say 20 people. The first 20 people can use that code for a 20% discount so check that out down below the last thing i wanted to mention that whatever the effect of this particular law on tech jobs what we know that regulations do matter if you create regulations that create bad incentives then those will have effects on the economy those will have effects on jobs because people and companies always respond to incentives i previously made a video where i discussed why european tech salaries are actually so much lower than u.s tech salaries the fundamental reason why european tech salaries are so much lower is because they have all these useless regulations that make it very difficult to run a business that make it very difficult to hire people which leads to companies to simply move out of there into the US and to other countries. If you wanna hear this analysis in more detail, and I highly recommend you watch this video right here where I go through in detail. I did a ton of research for that video. I think you will really enjoy it. So watch that video next. Check out my program down below and I will see you in the next one.